So tell me, who is Ayn Rand? How you discover her? And how her writings <laughs> work? It's the one question at a time. Okay. Because okay. otherwise it's too much. Right. Start with who is Ayn Rand and then how I discover her. Yeah. The Ayn Rand uh, is a very successful American author. Uh, who, uh, who wrote some classic novels, Atlas Shrugged, The Fountainhead, which were huge bestsellers in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, she, in those novels, articulates a new philosophy called objectivism, which she then wrote extensively on uh, in her nonfiction, uh, in nonfiction books. She was born in 1905 in Russia as uh, to a middle-class Jewish family. She, she witnessed the Russian Revolution um, in uh, 1917 as a teenager and uh, very quickly discovered the evils of communism and that if she did not escape, she would be persecuted. She was at an individualistic spirit. She had her own ideas. She did not conform to the communist model uh, that was being imposed by the communists in Russia. So she managed to escape or leave the Soviet Union and, and, and uh, go to the United States. She arrived there, a young uh, woman of, in, her, in her 20s, and uh, started with nothing uh, and uh, managed, to get a, managed to get work in, in Hollywood and learn English and become a best-selling novelist. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fantastic story of an American success to, it's uh, starting from nothing and achieving greatness. Wonderful. When did you, when did you discover Ayn Rand? So I read Ayn Rand for the first time uh, when I was 16. Uh, I was living in Israel and at the time I was uh, committed really to, to ideas that were very much the opposite of everything she believed in. Everything she believed in? Almost, everything. almost, almost everything. everything. Uh, I, I was a socialist, I was a collectivist, I was an altruist and very explicitly so. And a friend of mine, uh, we were talking one day and he was uh, uh, articulating ideas about free markets and capitalism. Mm. And I looked at him and said, you know, where are you getting this nonsense from? And he handed me a copy of Atlas Shrugged, um, and, which I read. And uh, in, in the novel, she, uh, the novel articulates her view of the world. Her whole philosophy is really in this novel. So it was very challenging for me because mm -hmm. it was... It was um, clashed with everything I believed in. Mm -hmm. And it took me a long time, a couple of months, to read the book. Uh, and I fought it. I argued with it. Mm -hmm. I yelled at it. And at the end of the day, she won. At the end of the ah. day, she convinced me. And by the end of the novel, my world had turned upside down. So your defeat was your victory. My defeat was my victory. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, once I finished Atlas Shrugged, it was just a question of, how quickly I could get a hold of her other books and, and uh, her fiction and her nonfiction. Mm -hmm. uh, it took me several years to go through all of them, but, uh, but the more I read, the more convinced I was of the truth of what she had to say. Mm -hmm. So you became an objectivist. I became an follower. objectivist. Yeah. I adopted objectivism, her philosophy, as mm -hmm. my personal philosophy of life. So you practice objectivism? You uh, put it into practice? Yes. I, th yeah. I, I think that's what it ultimately means, to adopt a philosophy. Adopt the philosophy. Yeah. I mean, I think everybody, Ayn Rand made the case, that everybody is ultimately guided by a philosophy. Mm -hmm. Explicitly most people, or implicitly? Implicitly. Yeah. So most people never make it explicit. Most people are driven by certain fundamental ideas that they've never really recognized. Mm -hmm. And that's what drives them in life. So, for example, uh, most of us grow up in uh, families that have adopted the ethics of altruism. Altruism mm -hmm. meaning otherism, the placing right. the well being of other people in front of, ahead of yours, which mm -hmm. was articulated by philosophers like Immanuel Kant and Augustine Comte. But your mother never meant. Kant. She never read Kant. She right. never read Kant. But she, she's a, culturally it's embedded. part of the culture embedded right. and she teaches you think of others first, think of yourself last, sacrifice is good. Mm -hmm. And she might not even mean it, but it's what she says. She, 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 don't, not trade, she. Right? Mm -hmm. And that gets articulated, that gets articulated over and over again and it gets embedded in your mm -hmm. own psychology and in your own ideas without knowing the origin, without knowing where it's from, you just grow up with it and you mm -hmm. think that that's the, that's the way of the world. And in that way, over a whole gamut of issues, 
you adopt yeah. a certain philosophy from the culture that is surrounding you. Mm -hmm. And that culture has adopted the philosophy from some of the leading philosophers in history. Mm -hmm. So everybody's guided by philosophy. Um, I think what Rand did for me, and I think what she does for many people who read her, mm -hmm. is she forces you to confront that and to question it and to ask questions. Why should I live for other people? Mm -hmm. Why are other people more important than me? And once you start questioning and once you recognize, you know, what the, true, what the correct answers to those questions are, uh, you embed that philosophy into everything that you are, into, mm -hmm. into how you act. And so, and it's, so instead of being driven by some implicit philosophy written by other people who, who you haven't even read and you don't know anything about them, now you've adopted an explicit philosophy that you understand, that you consciously accept, mm -hmm. and it becomes a very, very powerful tool for living a full and successful and happy life, mm -hmm. which is ultimately the goal. So it was fortunate that uh, at the age of 16, you were an alter altruist and a statist, collectivist, yeah. but you encountered Ayn Rand. Very fortunate, very right. fortunate, right. absolutely. Some people are less fortunate. What yes. would you say to them? Go read Ayn Rand. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say pick up the book, uh, and, and this is part of what we try to do. I at mean, any I, age? At any age? I think any at culture? any age, at any culture. Yeah. I, I, I don't think that... Uh, it's a philosophical truths are not culture dependent. Okay. Reality, the truth of, of something in reality is not culture it's dependent. It's so universal, it applies to any culture. It's universal. The, the principles, the philosophical principles that Ayn Rand articulates are universal. They apply to any individual in any culture. So are you saying that Ayn Rand's philosophy is for everyone? Yes. Is it? It's for anyone who's willing to put in the thought and are willing to take responsibility for their own lives. So, will everybody who reads the book become an objectivist? No. Okay. Because some people would choose not to adopt it. Mm -hmm. Some people will reject it. But is it good for everybody? I believe it is. Mm -hmm. I, I believe it's consistent. It's a philosophy that is consistent with human nature. Right. And therefore, any li a, you know, live human being will benefit from it. Mm -hmm. But I presume it must be more difficult for some people yes. than others. What yes. would you say to that? I, I, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, think it's, I think the older you get, the harder it is. Because the more, the more you have integrated the philosophy that you grew up with, the more you've integrated an alternative view. And the more that's integrated, the harder it is to, to dislodge. So the older you are, the harder it is. doesn't mean it's impossible. I know some people who relatively late in life have adopted these ideas. I also think it depends on the culture. Mm -hmm. And it could be a variety of different reasons. Uh, I think some people, their life is easy. Their life is pretty good. Ah. They're not willing to be challenged. Uh -huh. They don't want to, to yeah. the, the, the angst of actually questioning everything they believe mm -hmm. in. In a sense, there's a certain intellectual laziness, and therefore they reject it. Other people, the culture around them is so strong, is so imposing, mm -hmm. that it's it's it, the, the consequence of adopting a new philosophy to their relationships, whether it's with their family or with their friends or with the culture at large, are too devastating for them psychologically to be willing to adopt new ideas. Mm -hmm. So I think there are a lot of different reasons. Um, it takes a certain courage, I think, to be willing to look at reality fresh That's right. in a yeah. new way. And not everybody's willing to, not everybody's willing to do that. Mm -hmm. If you have any familiarity with Japan and its culture, what would you, um, what would you say to um, Japanese people, people in Japan adopting or accepting? So I have to say I have limited knowledge of Japanese culture, mm -hmm. so please don't be offended by anything that I say. Um, I mean, obviously, I mean, it seems to me that Japan has a strong sense of collectivism of the, the Japanese people. I think it's partially, you live on an island, and, and there's a certain, there, there has been historically a certain mm -hmm. uh, remoteness and a reliance internally uh, that has is, that is strengthened that collectivism. Uh, my sense is that to be an individual, uh, to, to be different in a significant way, is more challenging maybe in Japan than in some Although uh, other cultures. Although it's not that hard to identify this or that individualist very strong individual people who became innovators. Yes, so, so there are in Japan, obviously, 
some incredibly successful, great innovators. I mean, if, you th if we think of all the, the industries that everybody in the world know, whether it's Honda or whether it's uh, uh, Toyota or Sony or so on, somebody had to have great ideas, organize a business, create something, innovate, you know, during certain periods, best in the world, even today, uh, you know, equal to anybody yeah. else in the world. Even today, yeah. But, well, I mean, 30, 40 years ago, you guys, I mean, Japan, industrially, was way ahead of everybody else. Um, so, there's certainly that there. But my sense is, at the same time, as there's certain individuals like that, that everybody else, at least there's this cultural attempt to homogenize mm -hmm. and to collectivize. And, and there's less individuality allowed culturally than there would in many other Western countries. So, this is the tension. Uh, that exists, I think, in Japan and indeed in most countries. The individual uh, striving and being allowed the freedom to innovate and be successful. And it seems like Japan has allowed that for some individuals, but at the same time, a certain pressure to, to conform. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a lot of pressure to conform. A lot of pressure to conform. And that, of course, makes the adoption of objectivism more difficult. Mm -hmm. because objectivism rejects the idea of conforming, mm -hmm. it rejects the idea of conformity, and to the extent that the culture is putting that pressure on you, you, you need more strength, I think more courage in a, in a culture like Japan than, let's say, the United States, where there's not an expectation of conformity, at least historically there has not been. Right. Uh, adopting an individual philosophy, individual ideas of being an individual w was celebrated in America. Mm -hmm. in, in Japan, a more mixed... Yeah. Of you, but but when you look around Tokyo and you, you see the incredible success and the and the innovation and the growth and the skyscrapers and uh, there's obviously some very good elements within the culture that have allowed for all that and 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 that is I believe those elements that have allowed for whatever individualism I exists in Japan. The good stuff comes from individuals pursuing their values. The good stuff not comes from, from collectivists, not no. from communities. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it comes from the innovation, the the brilliance of 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 the individuals who've you know carried Japanese and, and the world uh, forward.